Welcome to America 451 with your host, Bill Monte. All right, America, let's see what's pissing me off this week. Well, we made it through the debate, and that's a good thing, right? I mean, <laughs> that was quite a show. Got me thinking, you know, since we had the first debate, and the person they decided was the loser was Joe Biden, so they just got rid of him and brought the next one up, it occurred to me that maybe this is how we should do the election, kind of like Survivor or like a reality show, right? You know? Donald Trump lost this one. Bring up the next one. J.D. Vance, you're next in line. And maybe they should give him a few contests, like putting together a puzzle that puts together a phrase or, or maybe swimming to find a treasure or having to climb a bunch of ladders and go through the sand. Because that's what it starts to feel like to me right now. Matter of fact, Trump lost so bad, he says he's not going to do another debate. So he's not going to participate in our little game anymore. It's kind of like if Rudolph just went off and sulked, which if you think about it, it's what Rudolph did, right? Until Yukon Cornelius came around. But Trump wasn't happy with the outcome of the debate. I myself laughed all the way through it, which I'm not sure was what I wanted to have happen in a debate about an election as important as this. But I don't know what else there is to do when the obvious strategy of the vice president was just to rattle him, and it's so easy to do. So let's go back in time and remember how he got here. Remember, the vice president invited all of us to attend a rally of Donald Trump's. She said, if you go there, you'll be amazed because he talks about dead people like Hannibal Lecter. She even missed the point there. He's a fictional character, and I don't think he did die in the movies, did he? And that people leave early, and the reason they leave early is because they're bored, and it goes on too long. And his response, of course, start off, well, she doesn't get any crowds at all. Well, she does get crowds, but she pays them. She pays them to be there. So the crowd she doesn't get, she does get, but she pays for them. But none of that matters. Because you know what's really important here? They're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. The Haitian immigrants in Springfield, Ohio, are eating your pets. Woo! Wow! That was great. That was just... So he fell for it. He, the, the lies that his own party and his supporters put together about this happening, he's the one that fell for it. That's just amazing to me. Absolutely amazing. He's not giving up on it, which is also amazing. Just yesterday, which was Friday the 13th, not good for the Donalds, Friday the 13th, he said that if he gets elected, that he wants to... Uh, to uh, deport all the illegal Haitians in Springfield, Ohio. He is now focused on Springfield, Ohio. In his mind, what happened to that debate was because there are Haitian immigrants in Springfield, Ohio, who are not eating pets, but that he thought they were. So now he's going after them full bore. I have a much bigger question, though. How did so many Haitian immigrants get to Springfield, Ohio? Listen, I live in South Florida. I know why we have a lot of Haitian immigrants, and they're great. They're wonderful. They're hardworking people. Happy to have them here. What goes on in their country is a shame. How did they get to Ohio? How did so many get to it that it's actually a talking point? The other great thing is that Trump yesterday advised two of the people who support him or are running for office to focus on illegal immigrants and specifically focus on Springfield, Ohio. Now, it's not bad enough that because of this candidate, kids are not able to go to school in Springfield, Ohio now. They've had bomb threats. People's lives have been threatened. The kids are being threatened. The schools are having to hold classes in another town. And the dogs and cats are just terrified. I know my dog It's like, well, I hope that no matter what happens, you don't plan on moving us to Springfield, Ohio, do you? It really was a wild debate. And, of course, he just came apart at the seams at that point. And there was one point in the debate. I don't remember exactly when it was. It might have been during the dog and cat rant. I'm not sure. But when she, the vice president looked over at him, and her face went from the smile she'd been holding to one of realizing this is kind of sad. It's kind of scary. 
She kind of looked like, uh, remember the movie Carrie? When they all made fun of her in the shower room scene? And then Amy Irving's character was looking on, and even though she'd been laughing at the beginning, she suddenly realized what a horrible thing they'd been doing to this poor girl. That's kind of the look that Kamala Harris had on her face during the debate. So I hope that they don't lose steam, the Democrats, because I, I think if, if they think that it's still just going to be an easy ride, it's not. As of this morning, on Saturday, September 14th, the latest national poll has Harris at uh, 47% and Trump at 42%. So I want you to think about that. 42% of Americans, even after that debate, 42% of people who can vote still intend to vote for that man, even after he totally lost it. Lost it more so than Joe Biden, who unfortunately just looked confused and sad. This is a man who got angry. This is a man who, who has carried that anger forward. This is a man whose hatred of everyone standing up against him is very strong. Who did he claim that was the only person that really understands him was the president of Hungary. I don't even remember the president of Hungary's name, but Donald Trump knew it. And if that's your biggest ally, you should be in huge trouble. That's the kind of thing Robert Kennedy Jr. should have been saying during his campaign to show that he was in big trouble, but it's not. So for those of us who might be feeling a little confident about the election of the vice president come November, the reason you should not feel that way is remembering that 42% we are going to get stronger. Listen, the bloom is going to fall off that rose of Kamala Harris and the debate. Trump is not going to stop what he's doing not going to stop what he's saying. And there are people who believe exactly what he's talking about. What you have to worry about, my friends, is the Electoral College. The Electoral College, which was put into place back when they were making this country, it was a compromise. Because there was a faction of people who thought, well, what we should do is to let Congress elect the president. And people, another faction thought, well, no, the people have to elect. So the compromise was the Electoral College. Now, I am one of the people who believes this is way past time that we should do away with the Electoral College. It is not in the Constitution, by the way. So we don't have to keep this thing, but we choose to. Guess who chooses to? The politicians. But the only political office that is decided by an electoral college is the president of the United States. You don't have this problem when it comes to mayor and dog catcher, governor, senator, member of the house. There's no electoral college. Whoever gets the most votes wins. And that's the way it should be. Whoever gets the most votes wins. Electoral college is a bunch of BS. And I would hate to see this man, who I believe is in serious need of mental help, possibly medical help, he should not be holding office. For the same reasons that people felt Joe Biden couldn't do it, Donald Trump can't do it. Now, do I believe the best person in the United States to run this country coming up for the next four years is Kamala Harris? No, I do not. The fact that this election that happens every four years should be the best of us. And America has decided that the best of us are Donald Trump, a failed ex-president, and Kamala Harris, who's basically getting to run because Joe Biden dropped out because of pressure. So uh, that's, you know, that's, she wasn't chosen by the people to be the person for the Democratic Party. It's just the vice president. So no, I, I, I don't believe she's the best person. But she's the best person out of those two. And you know how I know this? Because Taylor Swift told me. I don't believe Taylor Swift would lie. I think Taylor Swift got a pretty good head on her shoulders. And I think that about wraps it up for this episode of America 451.
Please remember to hit that like button and subscribe. Remember to comment. Either say, hey, Bill, Monty, my God, you got this right, dude. You called this debate before it happened and after it happened. All right, Bill Monty, you don't have any idea what you're talking about. But say something, all right? So hit the comments, hit the share, tell your friends about the show. Again, we're available only on Spotify as an audio podcast and on YouTube as this video. So I hope that you'll join me as we try to promote I hope that you are getting out there. I, I, are you registered to vote? Get out there and register. If you're not registered already, my God, time's running out. What are you waiting for? There's a link on Taylor Swift's podcast, and it will add to her numbers. Wouldn't it be funny if she actually gets more people in terms of getting them to vote through that link than either of these two people get votes to be president? Maybe we should have a Swift Kelsey ticket. I don't know. It could happen. Anything could happen right now. Because this is America 451, and I am signing off. Remember, be safe and be kind.